Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick follow-up video. This is going to be about spaying and what to expect. We just went through a spay with Aura. Uh, as you might have seen from the previous videos, we waited until she was after her first heat uh, to get the procedure done. Aura, can you say hi? Uh, that was at the recommendation of our vet, as well as the people that we got um, Aura from, uh, the, the breeders. And you'll find that... Uh, some breeders actually require you to wait to go through the first heat. Some put in their contract or whatever you sign when you get your puppy that you're going to have to wait. Uh, and this is because a lot of Warzoi breeders believe they want the full amount of hormones through a first heat to help the dog grow. And, you know, I think there's studies on both sides. We just decided... Uh, that it was best just to go with the recommendations of people who have done this before, and that's what we did with her. But with Esper, it was different. You know, we adopted Esper. She was about eight months or so old, and the stipulations of that was get her spayed as soon as possible. So I just wanted to go through You know, now we're four weeks out of Aura's spay, and I just want to talk about, you know, what to expect. It's kind of a, you know, it can be a scary thing. It's not, uh, it's not an easy procedure. This is something where they're put under general anesthesia. This is not uh, not the same as neutering where they just, it's, it's a little bit more involved. So let's talk about it. Um, let's start with Esper. You know, Esper was, we did not have a good experience. She uh, was allergic to the medication that was given for pain after the procedure. She also had a terrible skin reaction to the, um, under the skin sutures, you know, they use dissolvable sutures now. So you'll find there'll be like, you know, lumps or something under the skin. Esper had a terrible reaction to that she was, she had a really tough one. I mean, the, the medication that they gave her, gave her, I mean, violent, violent diarrhea for, I don't know, <sighs> I feel really bad. Christina was home alone. I was at work and uh, Esper decided to spray paint our room. Yeah, this is terrible. We also had to use a cone. So sometimes you have to use a cone and sometimes you don't. And the cone is just to prevent the dog from licking the wound. And we'll kind of go more into the timetable as we talk about the procedure. They say you want to limit your dog's activity seven to 10 days or so uh, after the procedure. And I absolutely believe that. Esper definitely needed that, especially... Um, you know, she was so concerned with the reaction she was having. She was, she was licking and, and causing problems on there. But, you know, every dog is different. <clears throat> Aura was my little magic child. She um, had very little reaction, reaction to anything. She was just quite uh, smooth sailing. I would say within like five to six days, she was almost completely back to normal. We didn't have to use the cone at all she just she was just magical about that uh one thing that's terrifying you know when you get your dog you pick them up from surgery they were under general anesthesia you know they're completely out of it they're just like humans i mean you've seen those videos on the internet where people are like <laughs> you know saying all kinds of ungodly things uh, and dogs in this you know they they're no different they can be panicked and afraid especially when you first get them um you know, or uh, Esper was so terrified, she she leapt into the back of the car, which is obviously not good, giving her condition. You know, bless you. Um, Aura's was a little different. You know, she she came out of the vet's office. She had no idea what was going on. It was like it was like looking at a drugged up person. And you know, she came home. She slept completely, just absolutely conked out. And it's tough. You know, I it, it's um as a dog owner, I'm sure, same with kids, like, you don't want them to get hurt. You don't ever want to willingly put them through stuff like this. So it's tough to see your dog in pain. It's tough to see them uncomfortable. Amazingly, dogs recover very, very quickly. So I would say the first, um, the first night, first day, she was pretty zonked out. They both were. They slept the majority of the first day. Uh, by the second day when they're getting up, they're whining a little because it is really, really sore. You know, uh, Aura didn't even go to the bathroom the first day. It wasn't until the next day that she did. It was pretty remarkable. Um, Esper was the same way. And, you know, it's it's tough. Do um, Borzois aren't typically very vocal. I mean, you've probably seen the videos where my dogs howl, but they make terrible noises when they're in pain. So it's, it's, it's really tough. Um, things to look for. So... 
you know, they always say, and this is, was, was information given from our vet, like you want to make sure that the, there's not any bleeding or swelling or, or bleeding when they urinate, that sort of thing. You just want to make sure that everything is, is healing properly. And, you know, in the first three to four days, this major limit of activity, this was, this was the hardest thing for us, you know, or as the most rambunctious little dog in the world. So, you know, she wanted to run around and play. So it's kind of like how to temper that without being mean. Cause you obviously don't want to uh, make it seem like she's doing something bad. So, you know, kind of tough. Esper kind of limited her own activity. She, she really wasn't comfortable the first few days. She really had a terrible, terrible reaction to surgery. And I think it was just, just a combination of everything. It was pretty bad. It wasn't it, sweetie pie. She's like, how dare you tell the internet our intimate stories, father? <laughs> So yeah, I, uh, you know, I know a lot of you have been contacting me, you're getting puppies. And, um, if you decide to spay or neuter, you know, please, please reach out to me and we can talk about it. You know, luckily puppies heal so fast. I mean, within a week or it was just, just, she was back to normal. It was, it was remarkable how fast she's healed. I mean, the scars is pretty much gone, you know, really happy about that fact. Uh, the other thing is, and I, I think I talked to this about briefly in the other video, if you do decide not to spay your pup, oh, we're losing Esper. If you decide not to spay your pup, uh, remember, dog, Borzois are very large dogs, and the heat cycles, uh, yeah, you're going you're gonna to need a lot of diapers. You're going to be in a lot of diapers. <laughs> On that note, I just wanted to update you guys. I'm going to try to start doing, I keep saying this, I, I keep running out of topics to talk about on uh, this channel as far as uh, getting people through, you know, what it's like owning a Borzo. If you think of anything you want me to talk about, um, please, please hit me up. Or if you have any questions, I've spoken to a lot of you guys on DMs and, and try to point you in the right direction or give you as much knowledge as I have about, uh, about the breed. So thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.